Hello my dear students in this lecture we are going to see terminology used in helical spring Here helical spring is shown now my dear students this helical spring is made from the wire this is a wire now these wires are turned these wires are turned right and we will form the helical spring now let us understand the terminology now my dear students the extreme diameter of these wires is called outer diameter right it's called outer diameter of the spring let us see here outer diameter of spring here the extreme diameter is called outer diameter of spring this diameter we can say do where do is nothing but outer diameter of spring outer diameter of spring right then the inside diameter there will be a di there will be a inside diameter also this inside diameter is called di this is called inside diameter of spring inside diameter of spring coil we can say spring coil also spring coils right it is a diameter of spring coils right now my dear students as there is outside diameter and inside diameter there must be a mean diameter therefore let us say d is mean diameter of spring spring coils mean diameter of we can say spring coils therefore this mean diameter will be outside diameter plus inside diameter divided by 2 therefore if i want to represent this mean diameter then i will find exactly at the mean of this spring therefore this diameter is called mean diameter of this spring as well as my dear students the wire used this wire used having some diameter therefore this dimension is called diameter of wire this dimension is called diameter of wire and this diameter of wire is represented by small d therefore small d is called wire diameter diameter of wire all dimensions here i am considering in mm right and my dear students the conjugative distance between two conjugative turns right two nearest turns is called pitch the distance between two nearest turn is called pitch therefore this distance is called pitch right it is represented by pitch right it is a pitch now if force acting on this spring is zero then it is called free length of the spring right whenever the force acting on the spring is zero then whatever may be the length of spring is called free length therefore this length total length of spring we can call it as a free length is a free length because there is no force acting on the spring now my dear students in spring there is one more very important parameter called spring index we generally use this parameter for the calculation it is called spring index and it is represented by capital c spring index is represented by capital c and my dear students this spring index is nothing but it is defined as it is a ratio of mean coil diameter to the wire diameter here mean coil diameter is capital d and wire diameter is small d therefore this spring index is a ratio of mean coil diameter to the wire diameter and my dear students this spring index indicates the relative sharpness of the curvature of coil this spring index indicates the relative we can say indicates the relative sharpness sharpness of curvature of coil of curvature of coil right now these coils are round right there are number of turns of these coils so the parameter to indicate the relative sharpness of this curvature of coil is nothing but spring index now this spring index is nothing but mean coil diameter divided by diameter of wire right mean coil diameter divided by diameter of now very first condition is that whenever this c is less than 3 then very high sharpness of curvature we can say very high sharpness sharpness of curvature and my dear students such springs are difficult to manufacture right now second point is that whenever this c is more than 15 then it is very less sharpness it is very less sharpness of curvature and because of this there will be a large variation in coil diameter we can say large variation large variation in coil diameter mean coil diameter mean coil diameter that is capital d and it is subjected to buckling loads such type of springs are subjected to buckling loads right 
Now, my dear students, generally, generally we have to avoid C less than 3 and more than 15. So, generally, this spring index C is used between 4 to 12. Generally, this is the value of spring index E used. And my dear students, for closed tolerances and spring subjected to fatigue loading, right? We can say for closed tolerances, when your tolerance required is very less, and whenever there are fatigue loads on the spring, and for fatigue loading, generally this C is used between 6 to 9. This must be the limit of spring index. And in spring terminology, we will see free length, compressed length, and solid length. Now I have taken this diagram directly from Vivi Bandari, one of the good author for machine design. Now, my dear students, here free length is nothing but if force acting on the spring is zero to find the free length. The force acting on the spring must be zero, means it is unloaded spring. And for unloaded spring, the total length of spring is called free length. Right. Now, and distance between two adjacent coils. Now, here there are various coils. Let us say this is the first coil, second coil, third coil, fourth coil, fifth coil. Likewise, there are more number of coils. Right. Therefore, let us say there are total NT coils. NT is nothing but total number of coils. Total number of coils is represented by NT. Right. And my dear students, here pitch is nothing but if load on the spring is zero, then distance between adjacent coils is called pitch. Now to calculate this pitch or to calculate this free length in terms of pitch, let us understand here. Now my dear students, if I consider four coils, let us say, if I consider total four coils, number one, number two, number three, number four, likewise. Now between these four coils, I can get three pitch. Therefore, here, pitch, this pitch, and this pitch, right? Between four coils, I will get three pitch. Therefore, one coil is here excess. One coil is excess for pitch, right? Therefore, if I want to calculate free length, this free length will be equal to now, here pH, here pH into total number of coils we cannot consider. Now, if I multiply pH with, then I have to multiply total number of coils minus 1 because one coil is excess here. Therefore, pH into total number of coils minus 1. This will be free length. Therefore, from this we can calculate pH is equal to free length, free length divided by total number of coils minus 1. This is how we can calculate pH. Now second diagram, that is diagram B is for compressed length. Now my dear students, on this free length, if I apply force and the force applied is maximum force, here if force applied is maximum compressive force, then there will be a maximum deflection in the spring. Therefore this delta is maximum deflection in the spring. Right. And my dear students, and in that case, the length is called compressive length. Right. Or compressive length. So my dear students, for obtaining compressive length, the maximum possible force is applied on the spring. And the spring cannot get compressed more than this. If I try to compress more than this, then the wire will break. The spring wire will break. This is the condition. Therefore, in compressed length, the force acting on the spring is maximum and the deflection will be maximum. This is very important. Therefore, my dear students, can I say here, this free length, free length will be equal to compressed length will be equal to compressed length plus maximum deflection plus maximum deflection right compressed length plus this maximum deflection will be equal to free length and my dear students the diagram number c is for solid length now my dear students here after the compression length there is no further compression is possible and if i try to compress further then the wires will break but here only for understanding, don't think that the solid length is the maximum compressed length or minimum compressed length. Don't think like this. This solid length is impossible to achieve. But what will be the length if the coils will touch each other? Here you can see, let us say this is the first coil, second coil, third coil, fourth coil, fifth coil. All the coils are touching each other. Now, what will be the length if all coils touch each other 
this length is called solid length but this solid length we cannot achieve we can compress the spring up to compressed length only now therefore what will be this solid length can i say this solid length is equal to now my dear students here there is a diameter of wire you will find there is a diameter of wire for one wire there is a diameter d and there are such ent wires right means there are total ent coils therefore the solid length will be ent coils into diameter of one coil or diameter of one wire right this is called solid length now again in spring terminology very important parameter is that spring stiffness represented by k now this spring stiffness is very much important parameter of spring it is defined as the force required to produce unit deflection now the meaning of this is let us say we have spring let us say we have such type of spring helical compression spring right and now my dear students let us say the spring is having at initial position let us say this is the initial position of this spring right now my dear students this spring will be having spring stiffness and this is always constant for the for any spring right now if i apply force on the spring let us say if i apply force p and because of this force the spring is deflecting from initial position to final position and let us say this deflection is delta right and my dear students this spring stiffness k is defined as force required to pro produce unit deformation means force divided by deformation is called spring stiffness therefore force in newton deformation in mm therefore newton per mm is a unit of spring stiffness right and my dear students here if this applied force is zero then deformation will be zero let us understand this concept if i draw force versus deformation diagram if i draw force versus deformation diagram if applied force is zero then deformation will be zero means the diagram starts from the zero and as force increases as this k is nothing but force divided by deformation and k is constant k is constant right therefore force is equal to k into deformation right therefore i can say force is directly proportional to deformation power 1 means there will be a linear variation such type of variation directly proportionality means such type of variation is called linear variation and there will be a straight inclined line therefore as force goes on increasing deformation also goes on increasing therefore there will be a straight inclined line such line is called linear variation line this is a linear variation line right and my dear students therefore linear variation means if i consider the change in deformation change in deformation with respect to change in force then this slope will be always constant this is called linear variation that is this spring constant or spring stiffness which is nothing but force divided by deformation is nothing but we can say change in force divided by change in deformation also right and change in force is nothing but y coordinate change in y coordinate and change in deformation is change in x coordinate therefore this is also called slope this is also called slope therefore spring stiffness is also called slope right therefore there are various names for this spring stiffness right there are various names for this spring stiffness let us understand these names this spring stiffness k which is also called spring stiffness right this is also called spring stiffness also called rate of spring this is also called rate of spring right this is also called gradient of spring right this is also called gradient of spring again this spring stiffness is also called scale of spring scale of spring right also this is called spring constant also this is called spring constant all are very important names right and this is nothing but slope of slope of force versus deformation diagram spring stiffness is slope of force versus deformation diagram now my dear students these springs are made with the help of spring coils right there are nt number of spring coils right now my dear students in total spring coils that is nt spring coils total number of spring coils there are two types of coils there are two types of spring coils that is first is active coils active coils and other is inactive coils other is inactive coils right my dear students the meaning of active coil is that the active coils contribute to the spring action 
and deflects under the action of force means active coils deflects deflects if force applied if force be applied and these inactive coils do not contribute to the spring action that means these coils do not deflect inactive coils do not deflect for any condition for any condition now my dear students in the spring there are different types of ends the according to end arrangement we will find these active coils now here make a table that here we will make one table that is type of end right type of end and number of active coils number of number of active coils active coils is also called active turn number of active co turns is represented by n therefore here n will be the number of active turns right and inactive turns active turns plus inactive turns will be equal to total number of turns nt right now my dear students very first type of end is plain end the plain end shows here in diagram it is represented like this and for plain end here i will write plain end for this plain end the number of active coils is equal to number of coils right then second type of turn we have plain and ground end right and my dear students here it is shown like this for plain and ground end second that is plain and ground end for this plain and ground ends the total active coils n will be equal to total number of coils minus 1 by 2 right and third and fourth is square end and square end ground end they are shown like this now for both them here i am writing for square end as well as for square and ground end square and ground end the number of active coils will be equal to number of total number of coils minus 2 this is how we can find total number of active coils thank you dear students in next lecture we will see stresses and deflection equation for helical spring